Hey everyone, welcome to part two of my series, Creating a Floral Abstract. Now, this started as a tutorial that people requested after I showed some paintings in my studio chat video. And I have to say it has taken on a really interesting direction. And I hope you will find this series as yeah, interesting as I am finding creating it. I thought it would be only just a couple of videos showing you how I create something similar to what I was showing in that uh, studio chat, but it really turned out to be more of um, exploration, workflow, trial and error, how I deal with yeah, just trying to find something that works. And as I'm recording this video, I have two more parts to the series. And I can tell you that at the end of <laughs> everything, <laughs> I have a large painting that I'm happy with, which I think, uh, I mean, I hope this helps you. I hope you can relate. I hope you can, you know, try for yourselves, find a workflow and a process that is not frustrating to you. And even if a lot of things are not working or, you know, you don't end up with a finished painting that you're happy with and you just keep trying, trying, trying and, you know, some things work, but most of them don't. <laughs> I hope you will find joy in that and just, yeah, just find a way to do that that leads to excitement and willingness to try more and, you know, just that feeling of looking forward to your next painting session creative time as opposed to just feeling frustrated that you've painted all these things and nothing is working. So. I hope, I think that's where the series is going and I hope that, you know, it'll deliver <laughs> that very big uh, promise, but it's just really interesting to me and I think it's fun to document it. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, in the first part of the series, I show you some preliminary sketches. You can actually see the first thing I started with, just pencil sketches on the top left corner of the screen. My main element here is a hibiscus flower and I really love hibiscus flowers and I'm just trying to create this kind of colorful abstract painting with those flowers in the center. But because I don't enjoy painting traditional like floral scenes with, you know, leaves and greenery or flower bouquets, uh, I decided to find my own way and um, this really appeals to me. So have that big bloom somewhere in the middle and then just a lot of pretty colors and abstra abstract shapes around it. So that's what I'm exploring. The composition is similar to uh, previous paintings that I've done and I made that small study or sketch, whatever you want to call it, in my sketchbook. You can see that on the left side of the screen. I really like certain elements of it, so that's my base for this larger piece. And I found that working in this size, this is I think roughly kind of A4 size. I can't remember the exact size, but something like that, which is larger than my sketchbook, but not as large as I would like my finished painting to be, which ideally will be the quarter imperial size. Um, that, that's the biggest sheets that I have. I'm thinking to go bigger next time I order some um, nice watercolor paper, but this size I feel, um, yeah, now we're moving into stamping stuff on my kid's hand. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm dealing with now. Uh, it's still, the kids are still at home. It's uh, COVID-19 era here while I'm recording this series. So I find that this size is a good kind of midpoint between the really small size, which I really enjoy working small and I love granulation and watercolors. And 
the smaller you work, the more obvious the granulation is, especially when you make like these close up photos that I make for, you know, Instagram and YouTube. So I really like that. But um, yeah, I, I want to work bigger. I want to have finished paintings that are bigger. And um, certain things don't work on a larger scale that, you know, they do on smaller ones and you just have more real estate and you just have to adjust things. So it's not so simple, I find, for me at least, to just make a larger copy of what I already did. Um, also, the smaller sketch, it's it has some nice things that I like, but it's not perfect. So there's still more I want to develop here. And yeah, and this is a good size. The paper is also, this is uh, actually cellulose paper, which I have discovered. I really enjoy working on it. Uh, I definitely see some differences between that and my 100% cotton. But for these, I would call them midway studies, paintings, whatever you want to call, it works really well. The colors blend and move. It's not cheap. Um, it's not like student grade, like mixed media, cheaper paper where everything just, it just, it doesn't look right. It doesn't work right. I find this is close enough for me to not need my 100% cotton. So I feel I can, you know, I can just paint more. I, I don't think about how much it's costing me is what I want to say. But um, yeah, it really seems to be working for me. I don't want this to be my final painting, but um, yeah, it, it works great for these studies, at least for the kind of techniques that I use. I do some blending, but I don't go really crazy rough on the paper. I don't do like really, really wet washes. I've discovered that going really loose and fluid is... Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't work as well for me. I feel I end up with either like really muddy um, washes or very light washes or it just, I may do like a first wash and then I don't really know where to take it. I, I need to start in a more clear way of where things are going to go, uh, kind of work smaller and then work and blend and let colors flow but not like these huge pools of water just flowing through your paper I mean it's an enjoyable process but I just I feel like for me it's it just brings too many challenges and I don't know how to when to stop and how to take it further kind of so this way of working um, works well for me and um, yeah so so this is the first slightly larger painting and what I like about it, well, I kind I like the composition. I really like those white, very abstract flowers that I sketched with pencil. I really, really like those and I really want to include them in future paintings. It's just an element that I feel that detail of the pencil. I really love sketchy lines in pencil. And I'm using um, pencils that are not water soluble. That's really the the way I'm enjoying right now. I find if I work with water soluble pencils, it gets too muddy. Um, at least with a graphite, uh, it's a different thing when I'm using like a yellow watercolor pencil. That's fine. Uh, that's I like when it blends with the other colors. But yeah, I feel those white flowers really give that detail to the painting, but still keep things very light. And yeah, I really, really like them. I think I will continue including them, but uh, maybe just in a slightly different placement, like that one I'm doing right now. I would like it to be on the other side of my, I don't know, let's call it the flower stem or something like that. So uh, the composition is working. Cer certain elements are working. I enjoy that yellow minty moment with the stripes that I have on the right side of the right flower stem. Hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, what I don't like, I think the flowers look a little bit flat, kind of a little bit too childlike. 
and just they need a bit better line work, which I'll try to work on in the next um, parts of the series. So that's what I'm not liking. And also, this will take me some time to figure out, but this is just too colorful. Now, if you've watched my channel and you've followed me for a while, you know that I love bright colors. I do. I really love bright colors. That's kind of where I gravitate towards. But I have found that if I use too many bright colors together in the kind of just too much of it, too much real estate is covered with bright colors, I don't like the result personally. It's, you know, maybe for you, it's exactly what you love. That's great. That's awesome. But for me, it's just too much. So I need to calm down. <laughs> and that happens at part four. Part three is me really, really not calming down, going full on color bright rainbows. And it's really fun. But um, I feel the result lacks a certain subtlety and sophistication that I would like to have. So that's just my personal opinion. So uh, you'll see that just happening in the next uh, parts. But for now, yeah, I'm just playing around. Um, I really enjoy this, as I said, like the size, this kind of paper. It's not too expensive. I don't get too precious about it. And I feel like I have some sort of a base to start with. I know which elements are going in. I know the basic composition. I know which colors I'm going to use. But then I still can experiment, try different things and, you know, keep what I like and leave out what I don't like. So another thing I really enjoy is adding some deeper colors to the center of my flowers. It definitely adds some depth and uh, definition to them, which otherwise they lack. As for, yeah, the challenges are for me where also to add the dark colors and where to that blue, it's kind of work. I kind of enjoy it, but maybe a little bit toned down. I prefer the area under the big flower better than the area under the small flower turned out. It just became a bit too, there's that dusk pink there, and then there's a lot of like blue there, and then there's a lot of pink. It's just too much. It needs to be more muted. Um, I was playing with the idea of stripes in the background, which I like. Um, yeah, you'll see it kind of develops and then I move away from it. I don't know. I'm just really enjoying myself. I, I think that's a huge part of everything, right? I mean, if you're not having fun, well, you know, if this is a hobby to you, then I really think if you're not having fun, then find a different hobby or find another way of working at it because the point is to have fun and relax and enjoy. But for me, this is also my job. So I want to have something to show for it and not just a series of videos on YouTube telling you, I tried this, it didn't work. I tried that, that didn't work. So it's like if you've seen the movie Under the Tuscan Sun, I love that movie. And you know, there's a part there about them. Uh, they built uh, train tracks from Vienna to Venice, I think it was, somewhere in Italy, uh, before there was a train who could make that journey, but they built it anyway. So that's me. I keep on painting, hoping that at some point, you know, the train will come, the magic will happen, everything, the stars will align, and I can make a painting <laughs> that, um, that pleases me and that I'm happy with. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of fun things here. And my four-year-old, she saw this and she was like, oh, that's so pretty. I want it in my room. So, you know, that's that's a success. <laughs> and um, yeah, just keep on, keep on showing up, do the work and uh, have fun. It's such a beautiful medium to play with and work with. And yeah, I just enjoyed myself. So you see, I'm trying to work that area under the flower because I, I wasn't liking it. 
but I don't think whatever I'm doing, I don't think it turned out that great. <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about things, but I do like the stripes and I like that neutral color. Neutrals are, semi-neutrals and neutrals are where some of the magic lies, I find. It's one of those, you know, supporting roles that if you don't have them, it's just the whole piece lacks that that depth, that complexity. So, yeah, and we'll get to that in part four. <laughs> so for now, I'm trying again. This was the one where nothing was working. In this case, I decided, okay, I'll start maybe with some pencil lines instead of the cobalt violet, um, just to have... I don't know, a better idea of where I want to add my paint. Uh, trying to kind of take my time and make the flowers look more real, just that the shape is better, more accurate, so it doesn't look so flat. And the petals, the petals are the challenge, especially when they, you know, you, you're trying to describe a, a three-dimensional object on a flat piece of paper and the placement of how exactly the petals bend towards you and away from you that's i think one of the big challenges in painting flowers and i don't like the hyper realistic style but i find that i really need to have some accurate details and kind of know how to paint these petals in a way that is still loose but also gives them that depth i hope that makes sense so yeah this was uh, i don't think i filmed the whole process but i think here i was just going probably a bit too fast i mean this video is sped up but i think i was also just like just going for it not thinking too much and um yeah that doesn't always work so it started okay and then that's where we ended up <laughs> that happens it happens embrace it enjoy it and at this point I was like I don't know what I'm doing nothing is working I'm gonna try everything so out came all the bright colors out came the watercolor pencils my oil pastels my carbothello pastel pencils which are fantastic Everything came out and I just had fun with all of it. And yeah, good times, good times, huge mess. But we live and we learn. And I'll see you in part three. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful creative day. Bye.